right. Welcome to the Michelle Mission. Two men, one podcast, every black film ever made. My name is Vincent Williams, and I'm joined as always by my partner. Hey, what's up? Holla at your boy. This is Len, a.k.a. the Bat Tribble. And somehow, it is still May. <laughs> We are in week four of our yearly exploration of bad black movies, which we have dubbed Mother May I Have Another One of Those Bad Black Movies. And tonight, we will continue our journey in the year of 1996. Yes. With the film that was actually made for HBO. Yes. Yes. Starring Sinbad, Gregory Hines, mm -hmm. James Coburn, mm -hmm. Burt Reynolds, mm -hmm. Vanessa Bell Calloway, mm -hmm. Ernie Hudson. And I know you all are thinking, wow, that sounds like a surprisingly good cast. And you would be correct for the Cherokee Kid, Lynn's Choice, in week, is, is it like 80 weeks in May? It feels like... Yesterday was to, was May, tomorrow is May. It's just always May. We have always been at war with May. We have been. And how are you, Lynn? I'm doing great, Vincent. How about yourself? I am also doing well. Good to hear. Good to hear. Thank you. Uh, shout out to each and every one of you out there who are watching us as we are streaming live from the Video Content Factory here in Maniunk, PA. Video Content Factory, Philadelphia's premier video podcast palace. And shout out to every one of you who are watching as we are streaming to YouTube out there in the chat. Uh, Mauricio Delafonte says that May is, in fact, the best time of the year, Vincent. No one likes to admit it, but people enjoy blood sport. <laughs> so they just enjoy us dealing with this every year. And we do it for the people. Yes, we do. Got to give to people. Give the people. Give the people what they want. What they want. That's what we're doing um, tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but before we start, I think that it is um, only appropriate that we begin with um, some condolences. Yes. Because yes. the world lost a great man. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say one of the truly great men of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Actor. Athlete, activist, he's the original Triple A. Yeah, yeah. James Brown or Jim Brown. Jim Brown, as he's more popular. Yeah, Jim known, Brown. Yeah. Uh, passed away this past week at the age of eighty-seven years young. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a real loss. It's it's a real loss. As, as you've said, Jim Brown is one of those transcendent figures. Mm -hmm. you, you know, in in activism. In, in sport, it, it's funny. I have I have a few nephews who play lacrosse, ah. and and at least once every couple of months, when I'm talking to their fathers and we're talking about lacrosse, or I'm watching someone play lacrosse, I chuckle about the Jim Brown rule mm -hmm. from lacrosse because there's people who who know about Jim Brown. Jim Brown was a Hall of Fame lacrosse player. Yes, he was. And if you know how lacrosse, you, you cradle it. Jim Brown, you, you, Jim Brown used to hold it against his chest and just run through people. <laughs> because there was no rule against that. Exactly. But Jim Brown was just this superior physical specimen. So he- Why am I gonna give it to them? Give me the ball. Just give me and the ball. So that they have the Jim Brown rule now it's that you can't, you can't cradle it like that. And then and, and you act, you know, as you said, um, his social activism yeah. certainly is well documented. And he has shown up here on the mission a couple of times. More than a few times and yeah, actually- a couple of times. Um, one of the great benefits of doing this type of exercise mm -hmm. is that not only are we putting a lot of these black films into perspective mm -hmm. and giving them a critique that the world really has not given them, mm -hmm. but we're also giving notice, serving notice to careers that 
have not been fully appreciated as they have. And Jim Brown, as you mentioned, Hall of Fame lacrosse player, goes without saying, some consider him either the, the, the greatest or the second most greatest football player of all time. Mm-hmm. And his activism speaks for, his, for itself in the 60s into the 70s and 80s. Um, but people know that he left football fairly early, mm-hmm. um, fairly early in that he probably could have played another few years. Sure. But he left it to go to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And he had a, for some, in some people's estimation, an okay career in Hollywood. Um, and if you only see him in like the 70s in the black exploitation films, which, you know, are hit or miss, to be fair, mm-hmm. you might think of, oh, you know, he was okay. He did things. No. If you really see him from the time he actually left football in the mid-60s and that late 60s block of work of Mm -hmm. Jim Brown. That's right. Jim Brown was indeed one of the most captivating leading men in Hollywood at that time. Yeah. Right? Um, He starts in the Dirty Dozen. Right. And basically is stealing scenes from the other actors in that movie. And that's a hell of a cast. That's a hell of a movie. You're talking about stealing the scenes from uh, Lee Marvin, mm-hmm. uh, Charles Bronson, mm-hmm. T- Telly Savalas. Is that Ernest Bur- Borgnine? Uh, Ernest Borgnine, he, he's got some scenes yeah. in there as well. Yeah, I mean, Donald it's, Sutherland. It's a hell of a cast. And him being like fresh off the football field, mm-hmm. he is holding his own yeah. in there. Yeah. And then another movie that, you know, Come came to the mission and we celebrate all the time. Absolutely, the split. Absolutely, is is single handedly one of the best heist movies. Yeah, of all time, and he is lock stock cool as hell. Yeah, in that movie. Yeah, yeah. I think we both talk about. It. I, I think one of the one of the unfortunate things historically that happens with his career is black exploitation. Yes, because he gets sucked in. Mm-hmm. And because of that, and because of the lack of critical love that black exploitation films have have gotten at the time and since then, I think his film career, like you said, doesn't get the credit that it should have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. You know, you have to acknowledge very complicated man. Very true. You, you know, his legacy is very complicated. Very true. You know, he had... He, he had some very well documented issues with women, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, allegations of abuse, shit, attempted murder once. Yeah. So, but a great man. Yeah. A great man. And, and it's, it's, you know, our condolences to all. Yeah. Our condolences to all. Most definitely. Mm-hmm. Most definitely. Um, Another thing happened this week, Vincent. Yes. A very highly anticipated movie trailer. Yeah. Hit the scene. Yeah, uh, sure did. The movie trailer for The Color Purple. Right. The film adaptation of the musical. Yes. <laughs> adaptation, the right. Broadway musical right. adaptation right. of the feature film. Right. Adaptation of the of the book of the award winning novel right 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 <laughs> yes um the, yeah. the trailer the trailer for the trailer for the film adaptation of the musical adaptation right of the film adaptation <laughs> of the book yes yes hit hit the yeah. airwaves yes it did this week yes it did uh, I think like yesterday right yeah. right uh-huh. I was un- unfortunately I wasn't able to carve time to, to to check it out right but you did what's the word I mean it looks good yeah it looks good the the cast is 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 a remarkable cast I know a you, couple of our favorites are in there Taraji, uh, Taraji P. Henson is in there Coleman Domingo is mm-hmm. in there it was surprise it was a surprise to me my new favorite actor, Corey Hawkins, is in there. I know. I know Corey Hawkins. Like, you know. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, and the, we're burying the lead, um, which is Fantasia. Fantasia. Yeah. Fantasia stepping up. Yeah. Stepping and up. And I've always been, I've always had a soft spot for Fantasia. And she played the role on Broadway. Yes, she did. Yeah. Yes, she did. Daniel Brooks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Halle Bailey. Halle, it, it's her summer. Sierra is in the movie. Okay. She because she plays the grown-up Nettie. Okay. Um her 
is in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, and and uh, our girl, Andrene Ellis. I saw Andrene Ellis. Mm. I know. Mm. I know. So 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 it so this the trailer. Well, the trailer looks good. One thing that I did not like about the trailer, okay, is that it was not clear that this was an adaptation of the musical. There's no music in there. There's music in there, but you don't get the sense that this is a different beat. That this is a musical. Right. Exactly. Like this is an adaptation of the musical. Like I think if you don't know, it just looks like a remake. Really? Well, that's yeah. not. I don't think that's good. And I didn't think I didn't really like that decision. But you know, it's the first trailer. Yeah, but I think the first trailer has to put it out there that it's trying to hold its own as a different animal. I, I 100% agree with you. You know, and I don't yeah. think the trailer does. Yeah, and and speaking as for someone who you know, of course, saw the movie. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did see. I was just about to say I actually haven't seen the musical. Oh, you haven't. I've never seen the musical. Okay, so I, I love the music from the musical. I've yeah. seen the I've seen mm -hmm. the musical, and and I went into it wondering, okay, like you know, this is going to be a lot of what I know. Mm -hmm. There are actually some bits that are from the book. That were, I believe, changed or massaged for oh, the. Oh, that's really interesting. For the now, for the movie. Yeah. That were put back in to oh, the Broadway play. Interesting. Um, and I don't want to give any of those away. You can give it away to me later. Okay. Um, but what what that did, it made the the Broadway play, you know, let alone that it's a musical, so it's totally different as well. But because those story beats are there, you're like, oh, okay, that's a little different. Um, it made it a whole different beast. And I really enjoyed it. Now, I wasn't able to see it with, with Fantasia. I saw mm -hmm. it when it came to Philadelphia uh, after about maybe a year in broad on, on stage in Broadway. But it was amazing. I could not believe it. It was an, another one of those moments where I was like, I guess I like musicals. Interesting. Because I really enjoyed it. I know this will surprise you, and I'm glad you're sitting but I thought some of the changes that they made from the book, I did not agree with. I like the book better. Than the oh, movie. so okay. So then you might actually you've appreciate. actually sold me the most on this just now. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, so um, it'll be interesting to see what people think of the color purple when that mm -hmm. debuts. I think it is going to be debuting not too not too far ahead. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, it actually will. Well, actually. <laughs> You've got time. It just doesn't come out till Christmas. Sure, sure, sure. It's, it's got, it's got, sure. you've got a minute. Looking you've, forward to it though. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So there you go. All right. Um, but speaking of movie screenings, ladies and gentlemen, we want to give you a heads up. And um, <laughs> uh, producer Dylan, I did put a, a graphic into the into the box that for Bryn Mawr, Um So you can look for that because the Michelle Mission is returning to the Bryn Mawr Film Institute this July, Wednesday, July 9th, 13th, I believe. I could be wrong. It might be July 19th. July 19th, 13th. It's one of those dates. Only we had some type of device. If you have a, the device that, that has have, the dates I believe dates it's on. pronounced Calandor. Yes. Can is, you is check the, the Calandor? Is, is the de it's, it's an app, actually. I think it's pronounced Calandor. There's an app for everything. It's, it's There's got to be an Calandor app Calandor that, that will give us will the... Tell us that is July 19th. July 19th. Yeah. We are returning to it's the... the Alandor. <laughs> to the Bryn Mawr Film Institute, yeah. mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, because we are presenting... Yes, we are. A Derville Summer. Yeah. <laughs> that is right, ladies and gentlemen. That is right. It is a Derville Summer. Derville if summer. you have watched Vincent connect Derville Martin to actors from all across society... Here and there. ...by way of one... Leonard Jackson as the star of Five on the Black Hand Side. And Dick Anthony Williams. And wondered, you know what? What is this Five on the Black Hand Side? Well, now's your chance because we are screening. Yes, we are. Five on the Black Hand yes, Side. Yes, we are. Wednesday, July 19th yes, at Bryn Mawr are. Film Institute. The Michelle Mission will be there. We'll have a talk back. We'll play an epic Six Degrees of Turville epic, Martin. Epic. Um, and it promises to be a great time. And guess what? Tickets are on sale yeah. right now. And it's a great movie. 
Like, 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 it's a film that you and I both enjoy. Yeah, we did enjoy it. And, We've already reviewed and, it. Loved yeah, it. so, so I'm really looking forward to that. I, I, I can't wait. Really looking forward. I can't wait because when we reviewed it, I had never seen it before. Mm -hmm. So this will be my first time seeing it on a big screen. Uh, no, well, it's my first time seeing it on a big screen. The way it was supposed the, to the be way, seen. I mean, if you're gonna see Dervell, it seems like he should be. It's, on the in, on a big screen in Cinemascope. Yeah, exactly. You know, the shame of it is, is that Bryn Mawr is not an IMAX theater. I know. So that we would see him in his proper perspective. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, that'll be fun. That's going that'll to be, be a, a lot of fun. great, great time. Yeah. Oh my God, Sharon Eldritch uh, says five on the black hand side finally gets its moment. Yes, it does. That's right, Sharon. Yes, it does. That's right. Yes, it does. That's right. It's yeah. happening. Yeah. It is happening. Oh, my God. I can't wait. All right. All right. <laughs> um, let's get this, the, keep this party moving, oh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. We got to get to the Cherokee Kid. <laughs> oh, we do, don't we? Yes. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> we do have to get to the Cherokee Kid. Uh, but we will first take time for the top five. Who's your top five? Pleasant in here. The air is on this this yeah. week. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, that's so nice. Top five, ladies and gentlemen, where Vincent and I will get together. I will give him a list. He will give me his commentary on it. And tonight's top five, Vincent. Okay. Keeping in theme. All right. With our dramatic. movie, The Cherokee Kid. Yes. That stars one. David Atkins, a.k.a. Sinbad. That's right. I am giving you the top five Sinbads. Bad adaptations of the Sinbad story. Sinbad the Sailor? Yes. You've got five bad ones? Yes. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm going to disagree with... Uh, I know. Okay, go ahead. Five bad adaptations. All right, I like it. I like top it. Top five sin bads. Okay, all right. All right. I'm, Are you ready? I, I am ready because I'm hoping I'll have to fight you about one of these. But I got an <laughs> army of skeleton dudes with swords in case I... Uh, I, 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 I wouldn't go there. Okay, all right. That's, all right. All right. That's the good stuff. All right. All right. All right. Come I on. ain't going to hear no Ray Harryhausen. Um... Talk. Slander. Slander. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was singing about Sinbad fighting the dude with the skeleton. Yes. 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 That was in the sorry, first one. But go ahead. That was, what's that's the, is that the golden voyage of Sinbad? Maybe. I'm no, sorry. No. That's on, that's the seventh voyage of Sinbad. Okay. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, number five. Number five, however. Is Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger from 1977, which is a fantasy <sighs> film that is directed by Sam Wanamaker, featuring stop motion animation by one Harry, uh, Ray Harryhausen. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um, nope. However. Nope. However, Vincent. Uh, however what? However, mm -hmm. this movie, which was made in 77, which yes. is the end of the last film, the last film of the this, trilogy. Of the trilogy. Uh -huh. Okay, which probably took too long in the making mm -hmm. because Go of ahead. the stop motion aspect uh -huh. of it. This one stars one Patrick Wayne okay. as Sinbad. Now, Patrick uh, was cast in uh, May of 1975, and the producer of this film, Charles Schneer, would say, I thought that we would have some chemistry with John Wayne's son, Patrick. Wow. And Tyrone Power's daughter, Tyron Power. Power, who plays the female lead. So I put them together. Pat did the best he could, but frankly, he was only adequate. We had him grow a beard and he looked fine, but as soon as he opened his mouth, we were in trouble. And that is true. 
of Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. I know you won a champion for Ray Harryhausen's uh, special effects in this movie in 1977, and they are very, very good. Oh, really? Really, Lynn? They is are. That, is, that, is that your analysis of Ray Harryhausen's special effects? Well, in they're very, very good? Well, in 1977, in 1977, I think they are, they are good, but I think they are- They're epic. They're starting to show, oh, stop. Vincent, because you have stop. to remember, because what you have to remember is in 1977 mm -hmm. is also the same year that we get Star Wars. Yes, absolutely. And Star Wars, which does have some stop motion animation, not as much, but has some of it in there, starts to give you a better appreciation of how this can be incorporated into, into the films. And in Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger, as well as Clash of the Clash, Clash of the Titans. Titans, which is done around the same time mm -hmm. as well, the you're it's getting harder and harder to dispel your belief. I think Clash of the Titans is a better comparison, frankly, and Clash of the Titans the effects are better, but you can't get Clash of the Titans without. Ray Harryhausen. No, I hear you. So, but that doesn't mean that everything he does is gold. Special effects wise, mm -hmm. all three of these films are gold. <laughs> okay. I cannot stand like, like <laughs> I thought it was so cute that you said the name of the dude who played Sinbad, yes. and then you said the name of the lady who played yeah. the lady, as if anyone <laughs> care. in the history of watching Sinbad remembers the dude. Who played Sinbad. Sinbad. No, you don't remember him, but he doesn't distract. Patrick Wayne distracts in this movie. Does he? He does. He does. And he, that's why he's number five. Okay. okay. Is Ray Harryhausen going to show up anymore on this list? Stay tuned. Number four. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> number four is Sinbad the Sailor. From 1947. Okay, all right, all right, go ahead. Directed by Richard Wallace, starring a darkened Douglas Fairbanks Jr. Oh, yeah! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maureen O'Hara and Anthony Quinn. Um, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. said about this film, Earl Flynn told me that I made a big mistake because nobody was interested in swashbuckling and I had to agree receipts were were very thin I, the, I think the thing is nobody was interested in seeing Douglas Fairbanks Jr. heavily made up uh, sure. doing any swashbuckling yeah, it's, it's, it's a little blackface -ish. yeah yeah I, 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 I don't think if, if I remember correctly because because I have to say when I go to Sinbad I go right to those Harry Hamilton of course I'm not going to fight you on this one. It's not that great. Okay, I'm not going to fight you. It's not good. All right. It's not good. It's, it's kind of boring. But boy, you, you, if you stand on one side and Douglas Fairbanks Jr. swashbuckling and Ray Harryhausen on the other side. Ooh, I'm, Maybe if he had Ray I'm Harryhausen. A, and, I'm going to stand with you, Lynn, but who this this real tough so far. See, this is a real tough list so far. Look, Douglas Fairbanks Jr., I, I, I don't have any, necessarily any problem with him. I don't, I don't think anybody kneels at the altar of him. I mean, what, he got a sword in his hand? Uh, yeah, I, I'll still take, give me Earl Flynn. I mean, Earl Flynn is better. And but, or, or, you know who's even better with a, a sword in his hand? Gene Kelly. Oh, in the Three Musketeers. In the original Three Musketeers. No, 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 no. I agree. Is that the only time Gene Kelly yeah, did yeah. something non dancy no, it's not the only time he's did anything non-dancing, no. Okay. But he, he, of course, he's mostly known for his yeah, dancing. Yeah, all right, go ahead. But Gene Kelly is a, was actually proved himself to be a very good actor. Okay, all right, we'll go ahead. Don't, don't get me started. This is, all right, go ahead. What's, what's, what's three? Number three. Number three. <laughs> the Seven Adventures oh, come of on. Sinbad. Okay. Wait a minute. Which is a 2010. Okay. <laughs> Woo, all right. We are back together again as brothers. Adventure film. Yes. This actually is a was a uh, a, 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 a a spoof 
Okay. A mockbuster, they called it, uh -huh. that was distributed by Asylum Films that attempted to um, capitalize on the Prince of Persia and the Clash of the Titans. In this movie, Patrick Muldoon plays Adrian Sinbad, oh, Lord. a millionaire owner of an oil company <laughs> from a long line of descendants of the Great Mariner. He and a small group of people fly to the Indian Ocean after learning that his oil rig has sunk after being taken over by Somali parent, uh, pirates. The helicopter becomes trapped in a thunderstorm and Sinbad refuses to go back, ignoring the pleas of his pilot. The helicopter crashes into the sea and he is washed ashore where he battles a giant crab and meets up with his surviving crew, crew um, as well as the leader of the Somali pirates, and then hijinks ensue on this island. And he has seven, seven adventures. All right. In this, uh, not a good movie? Not a good movie. All right. All right. I watched this one solely yeah. for this episode. I feel like I remember this being out, and I said, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah, well. So you're a good man, Charlie Brown. I, 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 I bit, the, bit the gun bullet for you. All right. All right. That was number three. That was number three. Okay. Number two. Number two. Is the son of Sinbad. Okay. Which is a 1955 Okay. Adventure film directed by Ted, uh, Ted Tedsliff. Okay. It takes place in the Middle East and consists of a wide variety of characters, including 127 women. <laughs> now, this movie, this movie was shot in 1953, was planned to be released in 3D. Okay, all right. However, because of difficulties with the um, production code, okay, of which I will tell you about a little all right. the studio head, one Howard Hughes, okay. shelved the film until 1955, where it was converted back into 2D and released. The um, the story of the movie is that the son of the legendary pirate and adventurer, who is his, also named Sinbad, okay. is, sing is single-minded in pursuit of two things. A substance called Greek fire, All right. which is an early version of gunpowder, mm -hmm. and beautiful women. All right! Yeah! So, so yeah. Although, <laughs> although the credited cast yeah. was chosen through auditioning, <laughs> Like on the wiki page, auditioning is a link, but it says not safe for work. There you go. <laughs> a lot of the harem girls, Tartar girls, oh. slave girls, oh no, trumpeters and oh. raiders oh. were selected through a series of pageants oh. and contests oh. that Howard Hughes either oh. saw or held privately. Did you have any boys? Who were photographers? Like, yes. did you ever know any dudes? Oh, that hustle! Oh God! The, the photographer dudes! Oh God! The photographer dudes! Dude, dude! After the show, I will tell you about one Stephen Warren. Oh, you! Oh, come on, man! You ain't supposed to call his name out. Oh, because he's he's he's, dude, dude! It's it's he's blatant. <laughs> he's blatant. The pho the photographer hustle was. <laughs> Terrible. No, well, then, then think of the movie mogul hustle <laughs> that Howard Hughes was throwing around. With the pageants. One critic <laughs> described the son of Sinbad as a voyeur's delight. Oh, no. <laughs> and the... Um, The 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 problem with the code that I mentioned uh -huh. is because this movie was condemned oh. <laughs> by the Catholic Legion oh. of Decency. <laughs> I bet they did want it in three D. <laughs> Mm. 
Oh, boy. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, my God. Anyway. <laughs> Leading the cast of women. Oh, there's more. Was one Lily St. Cyr. Okay. Who is a well-known and apparently highly respected striptease artist of the 50s. All right. She was one of the leading. Do your thing, Lily. <laughs> Just like filth comes up first on yeah. her filmography. Yeah, yeah. All right. And number one. And number one. As if, could there be a Sinbad movie that was worse than the son of this Sinbad? This is the Sinbadist. This is the Sinbadiest. All right. And that would be? Sinbad of the Seven Seas. Mm-hmm. A 1989 Italian fantasy film <laughs> produced and directed by Enzo Castellari. All right. Um, Is it there was, Williamson in it? No. Okay. It revolves around the adventures of Sinbad the Sailor who must recover five magical stones to free the city of Basra mm -hmm. from the evil spell cast by a wizard, which his journey takes him to mysterious islands where he must battle magical creatures in order to save the world. The film was made with a largely Italian cast and crew, and like most Italian movies, it was filmed on location without sound equipment, and all the dialogue and sound effects were dubbed later, mm -hmm. um, primarily because the role of Sinbad mm -hmm. It was played by one Lou Ferrigno. Yes. The Incredible Hulk I himself. thought that's why this sounded familiar. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I got suckered to yeah. go see this movie. Yeah. At it's, the time. it's a bad movie, but I, I, I find it a bit entertaining. I don't find it entertaining at all. Oh, it's you, a waste. You got to go into it with the proper spirit. <laughs> or spirits. Oh, well... <laughs> Well, okay, okay. I I didn't see All it in right. spirits. I was All not right. a drinker at the time that I saw it. I take offense that Ray Harryhausen is involved with this list at all. You it, should have found a fifth one that didn't involve Ray Harryhausen well, this, in the '70s Sinbad movies. Well, to be honest, pretty much every other Sinbad movie, there is something to enjoy about them, even mm -hmm. if they're not. Some of them aren't super mm -hmm. super great. But that one is. When's the last time you saw Sinbad in the Eye of the Tiger? In full disclosure, they all run together. Yes. Because when I watch them, I kind of watch them all together. Now, Eye of the Tiger, is that the one? I know this is, sounds really stupid, but it is actually like an Eye of a Tiger yes. involved. Yes. Yeah, I like that. Is that they, they fight like giant? It's so funny. You said the uh, one movie he fought a giant crab. Are there giant crabs involved in Eye of the Tiger? Is that Eye of the Tiger? Hmm. I don't remember that. It's been a while since I've seen it. Because it's the, it's, it's the woman and she has a tiger or something. Is yeah, oh, oh, my God. Maybe. No, I'm not looking no, it no, up. No, no, please don't look no, it I'm up. I'm just putting my phone yeah. over. No, yeah. I'm not looking it um, up. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since I've I don't seen know. It. I don't see a noticeable difference in quality in all three of them, which is part of the reason they run together. Well, like I said, the, again, biggest, the biggest problem is, the, is it is this, the actor. It, 100% of the reason that I've ever watched Sinbad, or anyone has ever watched Sinbad, is the special effects. I know, I know. Like, no one watches it for the, the acting. I know, I know. So, you know. But, he's, he's Patrick Wayne is, there's a reason why John Wayne's son doesn't act. Okay, yeah. I had already forgotten that he was in it. From the beginning of your time, I, I had forgotten. I was like, who the hell is Patrick Wayne? It's John Wayne's son. Well, apparently it's John Wayne's son. Acting next to Tyron Powers. All right. All well, right. There you go. Well, there you go. Those are the five Sinbads. Those are the five Sinbads. Okay. We'll see whether or not the Cherokee kid it, it fits belongs in, in that Right, 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 right. From Sinbad to Sinbadis. And there you go. All, All right. right. But now. But now. It is time for the Game of Kings. A true adventurer. Indeed. <laughs> oh, that picture is fantastic. <laughs> it never doesn't entertain me. 
Six degrees of Derville Martin, ladies and gentlemen, where Vincent will attempt to connect the man who should have been Sinbad, mm -hmm. Derville Martin, to two actors of my choice. Keeping it in theme, Vincent. Keeping it themed. I've chosen two comic actors from the 90s. Two comic actors from the 90s? Much like, much like Sinbad. Much like Sinbad. To see if you can connect Derville Martin to them. Okay. All right. Comedic actors from the 90s. Yes. Starting with number one. Number one. And six movies or less. Six movies or less. Connect Derville Martin to. To. Dana Carvey. Dana Carvey. Well, this is how you get from Derville Martin to Dana Carvey. Derville Martin is, of course, in. See, I don't want to get to Dana Carvey because I can get to him a couple of ways. Mm hmm. All right, we'll do it like this, though. Derville Martin is in Five on the Black Hand Side with Leonard Jackson. Which will be screening at Bryn Mawr Film yes, Institute, ladies will, and gentlemen. Who <laughs> is in Boomerang with Eddie Murphy. Mm. Who is in Dream Girls with Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Who is in Austin Powers Gold Member with Michael Myers. Uh, okay who is in Wayne's World with Dana Carvey. Excellent. There you go. Well done, Vincent. There you go. All right, I thought that might stump you a little bit. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's besides the Wayne's World films, I don't know what else Dana Carvey was in. I mean, he's done some movies. His, his movie yeah. career never really yeah. like hit like that. I was curious, though. I'm not surprised by that because I don't think Dana Carvey is that funny. I was going to... That was my, my question. Where yeah. did you stand with Dana Carvey? I don't Carvey? think Dana Carvey is that funny. I think he is sort of... Like, there's that sort of midland group of SNL actors mm -hmm. who kind of got caught up in the wave, like, between Mike Myers and Adam Sandler. It's like a whole little middling wave of them that have careers mm -hmm. that, you know. Yeah, I catch you. They were right place, right time. Yeah. I remember Dana Carvey, he had a, a short-lived TV sketch show mm -hmm. that is, like, kind of infamous. Uh, I think, like, Ben Stiller was on the staff of writing mm -hmm. and stuff like that, that um, did some, some funny stuff, mm -hmm. some very cutting stuff right right um that didn't go over well with right. the audience at the time right because um i think it was on a, it was on abc mm -hmm. and it wasn't in a good time slot for it um that you can i think you can even see it on on hulu or there's a documentary about it yeah on hulu that's pretty interesting that the documentary about his show is probably and even though the show is kind of funny it's probably the most interesting thing about sure. Dana carvey who always struck me as someone who i didn't like I didn't have feel one way or the other about yeah, it, honestly. Yeah. But he always felt like a little bit of like a three dollar Martin short. Yeah, it, ooh, and three dollars is giving him credit. That's true. Because you know, yeah. Because I I like my Martin. Oh, short. Martin, Martin short, short is actually, a, a, I would dare say, damn near a comedic genius. Yeah, yeah. I like Martin Short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that whole that whole generation of SNL is hit. And then people just kind of got caught in the wake yep. of the, you know, like I said, it's people that should be sending money to Adam Sandler, Chris Farley's estate. Will Farrell. Will Farrell, like right now. Mm -hmm. Like just send them checks because you were just there. Yep. Yep. But and Phil Hartman's estate. Phil Hartman's estate, right. Right. All, right, all right, number two. Number two. In six movies or less, Vincent. Yes. Connect Derville Martin. Derville Martin. This was actually a, a comedic actor. A comedic actor. Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser. Mm-hmm. Well, here's how you get to Brendan Fraser. Tell me. And I'm gonna have a little fun with Brendan Fraser. Oh, why don't you? You have yourself a ball. 
Let me just line up everybody. Okay. Dylan, we need a a, a, a Vincent Brain sound effect. <laughs> stop. Stop. Damn, you made me lose it. All right. Maybe like the Plinko chips from uh, <laughs> The Price is Right. All right. This, this is how we're going to do that. And I'm gonna I'm go way around. All right. Oh damn! Did I lose it? Hold on. Shit! I just lost it. No, now I got it. Now I'm back. All right. So, who am I getting to? <laughs> Who's you? Brendan Fraser. <laughs> Brendan Fraser. I got it. All right. Who am I going to? All right. Derville Martin is in. Five on a black hand side with Janet Du Bois. Oh. Janet Dubois. Janet Dubois. So yeah, what other movie was she in? Is in a man called Adam with Cicely Tyson. Oh, okay. Cicely okay. Tyson is in oh, which one of the movies is she in? Which one of them Tyler Perry movies is Cicely Tyson in? No, oh, she's in a bunch of them. She's in at least two. Like Big Mama's Reunion, Big Mama Makes a Pot of Chitlins. I feel like she... Big Mama... Well, I, well, I think you mean Medea. Um, uh, right, right, Medea. <laughs> but um, I feel like she's in one of those... Give me a Medea movie she's in. I, I, Give me one. Big Mama's Big Old Big Mama... Yeah, she she's not in any of the Medea ones. She's but she's in Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Cicely Tyson is in Diary of a Mad Black Woman with Tyler Perry. Mm, I just want to. Yes, okay. Tyler Perry is in Why Did I Get Married Too with The Rock. The Rock. The Rock ends. He's oh, in, he shows up at the end. Yes. And The Rock is in. Is it The Mummy Two? With Brendan Fraser? Yes. Is in The Mummy 2 with Brendan Fraser. Wow. There you go. All I right. told you I was going to take a little... You, you... Take, uh, take a little journey. You weren't so cute there. Yeah, take a little... Take a little... You got there. Take a little journey. All right, all right. Where are you on the Brendan Fraser meter? I'm happy for his resurgence. I really like him on Doom Patrol. But, you know, I'm happy for him. Yeah. You know, why not? Yeah, I don't have no beef with Brendan Fraser. I got no beef with Brendan Fraser. I don't have no beef with Brendan Fraser. I mean, you know, you know, he was in Crash, but I mean, that's the only thing you can hold against him a little bit. Yeah. Was he? He was. He's like the like the, the politician. Oh, I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. Mainly because I forgot all about Crash. People have yeah. forgotten about that. Yeah. It's, isn't it funny how we're all sort of embarrassed that Crash happened? Like, everyone is sort of embarrassed that it ever happened. And, like, people said nice things about it. So we all pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah, which, which to me seems a little... It's, I mean, I think that's fair, though. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right, well, there all you go. All right, there you go. Well done, Vincent. There you go. Um, all right. <laughs> I threw you with Tyler Perry. You did. You weren't ready for Janet Dubois. I was not Perry. ready for Janet Dubois. You pull him off. Because you, you said Janet Dubois. It's like, okay. Where's he going with this? What else was she in? But then I forgot. Yeah. She just shows up for a cup of coffee in a man called Adam. That's so, right. And there you go. So you pulled, pulled her, her entire filmography. <laughs> She was in something else that we saw. I'm sure she's in something. She was in something else that we saw. And we said, is that Janet Dubois? Yeah. And then it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then she does TV and she doesn't need to do TV. Look, man. Let's get into our review of Sinbad in The Cherokee Kid. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. We're not doing. Oh, right, because we can't. Because now, right, the cameras are always on. <laughs> I mean, I, 
technically could Larry edit stuff out. Oh, Larry King. And I, don't forget, I forget to edit right. it out. Next thing you know, we got right. lawsuits. Right, right, you can't, right, 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 right. All right, the camera's off. Did you see Janelle Monet? This... Oh, Lord. <laughs> did you see Janelle Monet on Rolling Stone? Come on. Of course I did. I saw the story, like like, like the backstory. Yes. Of, of like the interview. Yes. And they had like some other. Yes. I was joking about things that we probably shouldn't really be talking about. All I said was, did you see her? All right, but then you like kept talking. And I read the the, or, the, the or, article, or, 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 and it's a great article. That's, there you it's go. It's a fantastic that's article. Right. You read it for the article. It's a beautiful yeah. article. Beautiful article. A lot of art. All right. You ready? Beautiful art. You ready? Janelle Monáe is a work of art. Are you ready? <laughs> I can say these things. The Cherokee <laughs> Kid. A 1996 action comedy film made for HBO is about a young homesteader who stumbles his way around the Old West and becomes a legend. Sinbad plays Isaiah Turner, whose quest to avenge the death of his mother and find his elder brother leads him to fame and glory. Starring Sinbad in the lead role of the Cherokee Kid. It is also a film with James Coburn, Burt Reynolds, A. Martinez, Vanessa Bell Calloway, Ernie Hudson, Don Lewis, one of our favorites, Gregory Hines, Walter Goggins shows up, and a film directed by Paris Barkley. And speaking of Saturday Night Live, Written by Saturday Night Live veteran Tim Kazarinski, along with Denise DeClue. Here, the fourth week of Mother May I, this was the choice of Lynn Webb. Lynn, what would you like to say about the Cherokee Kid? Giving myself an edit point right here. You know what actually is my favorite adaptation of the Sinbad story? What? <laughs> is an episode of Popeye called <laughs> Sinbad the Sailor, mostly because I always remember the song from it. It's like, who's the most extraordinary or ordinary fellow? Who? Sinbad the Sailor. I love that. I love it. And they're dancing. I love it. I watched that again. The Cherokee Kid. I made a mistake with this movie. Okay. Um, I made I made three mistakes. Three mistakes. Three mistakes with this movie. Okay. Um, first, and before I get to my mis mistakes, mm -hmm. let me tell you where I stand. You know, we're talking about Sinbad, the mm -hmm. the, the the mythological um, character. Yes. Um, from pulp, mm -hmm. pulp fiction. Let me tell you where I stand with the the actor, the comedian, sure. Sinbad. Sure. Because in 1996, Sinbad is at the height of his powers at this time. Okay. Um, he is he started as a comedian, got his start on famously on Star Search. Yes. Um, where he made it all the way to the finals. He sure did. Uh, he did lose in the finals, but he made it all the way to right. the finals. Yeah, to Dennis Miller. Dennis, no, yeah. he he beat Dennis he Miller. He beat Dennis Miller. He lost made it to the to final. Some other dude. He lost to um, oh god, I just John Kazir, okay. who actually does a lot of voice acting. Okay, all right. Um, but then finds his way onto television. Mm -hmm. Um, does cameos in a bunch of TV shows. Famously shows up on the Cosby Show at the time. Yeah, um, one episode. Right. And it's a good episode. Pretty much like you know blows blows um, the producers away mm -hmm. so much so that they then cast him in the spinoff, A Different World. Different World. And it is there where he really cements mm -hmm. himself as. Um, he's already making it on the stand-up mm -hmm. circuit, but now he cements himself as kind of like a, a bit of an actor. Yeah, oh yeah. And a little bit of a romantic lead, yeah, because that's where he meets and couples with Don Lewis. Beloved character, Walter. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, and he's on there for four years. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, he then goes on to have some very huge success 
on HBO with some huge comedy specials. Mm -hmm. um, also hosting musical um, concerts. Yeah. yeah. It's famous for its concerts that are, that are filmed on the islands mm -hmm. that, are, that are brought to H HBO. Um, he's got a fledgling movie career at, at the time. Not like a leading career, but he's kind of like that guy that pops up, shows up in movies, sure. do, doing good work, stealing scenes, um, stealing scenes in Jingle All the Way. He does a f series of films with Phil Hartman. Uh, we mentioned uh, mm -hmm. Saturday, um, Saturday Night Saturday Night Live fame. Um, hosting the Apollo. Yeah. Showtime at the yeah. Apollo. Yeah. He is he is burning. He, he's doing it. He, he has a career. He's got a. He he is one of the hardest working people in showbiz mm -hmm. in 1996. Yeah. Um, and the world for the most part loves him. Like he his brand of comedy is definitely. He leans more in the family. Friendly. He's he's a clean comic. Clean comic. Yeah, Some might even say that he, he sometimes comes off a little like dad jokish. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that's it. That's his lane. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. in in 1996, you're actually able to operate in a lane and be successful. Sure. In there, right? And and God bless him, he does it right, and he and he and he rolls with it. But. The thing about Sinbad that you cannot help but notice the first when you whenever you meet Sinbad is that he is not a small man. No, he's not. He's not. He's not a like a, an obese man. No, but no. he's a very tall man and with huge dimensions. He's yeah. big. He's a big man. He's a big yeah. man. You know, he's an ex athlete. He's an ex athlete. You know, military. Yeah. Military. Like so. So he 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 owns it. Yeah, and he he wears and he wears his with very broad shoulders. Um, he wears his size for the most part very comfortably mm -hmm. when he's on stage doing his stand up, mm -hmm. when he's on stage hosting in his hosting role, which is where he made the bulk of his success. But when he is on television, and maybe even more so that when he is in film, I think his size then operates against him. Mm -hmm. And you find himself, it's almost like, it's almost like when you used to watch uh, Sesame Street mm -hmm. and Big Bird would come onto the scene, mm -hmm. and when Big Bird would come on, would come onto the TV screen, you could literally feel and see at the same time the the camera pulling out a little bit so he could take him all in. Right, and it is almost as if when Sinbad is on screen, no matter where he is, the camera has to pull back a little bit to get him all in. To get him all in, <laughs> yeah. You know, even if it's a three quarter shot. His shoulders are about a hundred yards wide. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's not for nothing. It's interesting to me that the time where I have seen him at least appear the most comfortable on screen, or at least come off the most comfortable on screen to me, it's when he is acting opposite another large body mm -hmm. like Arnold Schwarzenegger in Jingle All the Way. Okay. Well, wherever else he's he's cast, where he more or less is cast as like the the funny guy in the room, the funny black guy in the room, mm -hmm. a la of the time Eddie Murphy, Martin Short. I mean, my, not Martin Short, Martin Lawrence, mm -hmm. who are probably like his contemporaries at that time. Very important detail. Um, he doesn't wear it as well because his size probably precludes him from doing any hardcore um, physical comedy. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as his, his charisma or his verbal texterity, he will never be confused with Eddie Murphy or Martin Lawrence. Sure. In sure. that regard. Sure. So those work as a detriment to him when he's on the screen and he's trying to find his his space 
in movies. And I think it's interesting that while in 1996, his career is kind of going on all cylinders, he doesn't, he's not able to get a starring vehicle in theatrical releases. Right. And is only able to, you know, double down on his relationship with HBO. I was about to say, it's this partnership that he really be, draws from. Uh, because of his, his comedy specials to get the starring role in the, sh the Cherokee kit. Right. Right. So, but God bless him, he does it. First mistake, mm -hmm. as you pointed out, this is an HBO movie. Mm -hmm. This was a movie that was produced by HBO for HBO, released on HBO. Mm -hmm. It did not see any type of theatrical release. Mm -mm. Thus, technically, we shouldn't be reviewing it. It's me. So, that's my faux pas. Okay. I will own mistake that. Mistake number one. That's my first mistake. Mm-hmm. So Sinbad is in, in this movie because it is HBO, HBO at the time becoming more of a power in Hollywood mm -hmm. um, because they are, it, it, and I'm reading the book, like the the, the, the um, oral history of HBO. It's okay. It's a great book. Um, and it is around this time, HBO is really flexing itself in Hollywood. Like they are getting people the movie theater or the movie, uh, motion picture companies to like, you know, like book in the time that their movies, once they move from the theaters, how long they're going to come to HBO. Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming to HBO first because they feel it's a place to be, right? Um, and because HBO has become the place to be, it's why you're able to get the cast that you're able to get. Mm -hmm. It's why you're able to get James Coburn. <laughs> right. <laughs> Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Like, now, neither James Coburn or Burt Reynolds, huge stars of the 60s, 70s, and, and, and 80s, are who they were at that time mm -hmm. in 1996. I mean, Burt Reynolds at one time was the number one star in in, in America, in yeah. the world. Oh, yeah. And now he is like third banana mm -hmm. to Sinbad in this movie. Mm -hmm. James Coburn is famously our man Flint. Yes, he is. <laughs> and, and here he is, just the bad guy in yeah. an HBO movie starring Sinbad. Yeah. But HBO is able to get those two mm -hmm. and bring them into this, into this film. Sinbad, by virtue of being who he is, is pro and, and a very likable guy in Hollywood, mm -hmm. is probably able to then, you know, get... Dawn Lewis, his friend. Right. You know, uh, Vanessa Bell Calloway. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and um, Hal Williams from yeah, um, yeah, 227. Howell, yeah, yeah. Able to get them in here. Yeah. Probably has a connection with Ge Gregory Hines. Mm -hmm. Gregory, do me a salad. All right, yeah, well, here yeah, I am. Yeah. You know, I'll make, I'll make you look good. Sure, Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. er get Ernie Hudson in here. Um so you you've got a cast built around him that is built to ha to, to to show him off. Yeah. Right. And for the most part, they do their job. Mm -hmm. I would say, Burt Reynolds. Well, first of all, let me say with James Coburn. James Coburn is just being a, a bad guy. Yeah. And I think he pretty much is sleepwalking through most of this movie. Yeah. Um, but he just has such gravitas that yeah. he brings to it yeah. that you just you know like if James Coburn sleepwalking, it's yeah, yeah. You're this, buying at it. this point, like you said, James Coburn's presence. Yeah. Is yeah. really. Burt Reynolds in 1996 is either about to or in the beginning of the second or maybe third coming of his career. You know what comes out in 97, a year after this. Boogie Nights. That's right. So he's like, That's right. he's, he's getting right. back mm -hmm. into, into the right. gear. That's um, right. And, and this is after leading man superstardom. This is after TV superstardom mm -hmm. with his, his sitcom in Evening Shade. Mm -hmm. And now here he is in the later stages of his life, and he's building himself as a, as a solid supporting actor. Mm -hmm. That's right. And if you don't believe it, the best times of Sinbad in this movie is when he's opposite Burt Reynolds. Yeah, look. Because nobody <laughs> sets you up and puts you down like Burt Reynolds. Look, 
Oh, go ahead. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna see where you're going with this. Burt Reynolds. He has singularly one of the funniest scenes in this movie, where he doesn't let <laughs> he doesn't let Sinbad borrow all of his animal skins and animal hides to keep him warm at night. So Sinbad has a. <laughs> he says, "Go get your own." So cut away to Burt Reynolds snuggled up all, under like three hides. It's Sinbad. It's got a live rabbit. That's right. He's just holding him to his chest. That's to right. Keep him, keep warm. him warm. Keep him warm. Come the morning, Sinbad wakes up. The rabbit's gone. Yes. Burt Reynolds is sitting by a fireplace, sucking on a on, on some meat. And Sinbad's like, "What's for breakfast?" And Burt Reynolds is like, "Your blanket." Your blanket. <laughs> Your blanket. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to m mistake number two. Mistake number two, which is this is not a bad movie. There it is. And there it is. <laughs> and there it is. I can't wait to get to mistake number three because I thought this was going to be mistake number three. It's not a bad movie. <laughs> there it is. I, I, I rewound that scene. I laughed so much. Look. I, there were mo other moments like him and Burt Reynolds. I just laughed. I laughed uproariously at them. He has a funny scene with Dawn Lewis where about mm -hmm. losing his virginity. Yep. That it's funny. That's right. Um, Ernie Hudson is terrifying in this movie. I'm like, oh my God. Look. I didn't know Ernie Hudson had it in him. Look. He's terrifying in this movie. The, the, the Walter Goggins shows up, he steals scenes. <laughs> Admittedly, it's before Walter Goggins is Walter Goggins, but you see, you see like, it, like you retroactively, see, you, see you understand <laughs> why he is. how this guy is going to become justified Walter Goggins. Yes, in yes. NYPD Blue, well, like you, you one hundred percent see it. Walter Coggins is, 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 is he's, in, he's insane. Well, more appropriately, this is more Vice Principal's Righteous Gemstones. Yes. Walter Goggins. Yes, it is. Because it's like we've, re we many of us discovered, but apparently rediscovered that Walter Goggins is hilarious. I know. I know. But please go ahead. I'm waiting to get to mistake number so three. This, so it, so it, it actually is not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie. There, there are problems with the movie. It's not a great movie. And it's not necessarily a good movie. It's just that it's not a bad movie, mm -hmm. you know? So, it, so there's another reason why it doesn't belong mm -hmm. in the month of May. Yeah. Right? So it has, it has all of that going for it. And then, so they're all built around setting up Sinbad. Mm-hmm. Sinbad in this movie is a little awkward. Yes. Doesn't know. I, I I think he I think they don't know what he wants to do, what he wants to be. Because in, in some instances he's playing like the bumbling there gun fighter. That's right. Um, but then he gets trained by Burt Reynolds. Right. But then he's the bumbling gunfighter again. Right, but then he has to get trained again. Get, get trained by again Ernie by Hudson's Ernie Hudson. Character. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah that's and then right. he, and then all of a sudden he becomes like this this dead eyed dick uh, right uh, gu gunfighter who still is a bit bumbling. Yeah. At the end, so it doesn't really know which way it wants wants to play him. Yeah. And none of them play one hundred percent. Feel one hundred percent real even in the world of this movie mm -hmm. because of Sinbad and his physicality. Mm -hmm. His phys physicality just can't quite pull it off. Um, so what is not a bad movie is it's, it's lessened because un unfortunately of Sinbad's participation in it. He's not bad in it, but he's just not good enough sure. for the movie. He lets down the movie, sure. you know? Um, much in the way that we, we spoke of like when Mario Van Peoples is asked to lead in the film. Not as bad, though. I was about to say, I don't, yeah. Well, not as ahead, bad, because because Sinbad, obviously there is talent there, and yeah. you do see it for the most part right. on, on screen. But um, that is that is the letdown of this movie. 
The third mistake. The third mistake that I made with this movie. Mm-hmm. Is that honestly, and th this probably should have been number two. Mm -hmm. Is that I underestimated Sinbad. Okay. I really did underestimate him because I went into this movie preparing. Yeah. Oh yeah. For this to be god awful. Yeah. Even even once I found that out that it was an HBO movie, mm -hmm. and as an HBO movie, HBO not, uh, notwithstanding basically still a made-for-TV Western. Sure. I was like, ah, but this is going to be garbage. This is, it's got to be. It's, it's Sinbad. It's yeah. Sinbad. I made a mistake. I underestimated him. He lets down the film, but it ain't that bad of a film. I, 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 I you know, I was, I was fine with it. I, I think, I think Sinbad is exactly who I've always thought Sinbad was in this film. I, I think Sinbad, I've never found him that funny. Mm -hmm. Like at all. Me neither. I, I think you kind of- His stand up. I, and, and right, I think you kind of spoke to it a little bit. I think Sinbad's lane and the reason, frankly, he became as famous as he did when he did was because he was the counter programming to Eddie Murphy and that whole deaf comedy jam generation mm -hmm. of of comedian. I, I think you, the two things that you said that 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 speak to this, and I know we don't, nobody wants to talk about it now. His that that, that appearance on the Cosby Show that you spoke to, and then when he was a cast member on the spinoff to the Cosby Show. A different world. Right. Bill Cosby loved Sinbad. Mm -hmm. And that love was 100% based on Sinbad was a clean comedian. He didn't curse. He didn't everything. And it was sort of similar to what happened with Mark Curry. Ah, uh, like yeah. Like these two yeah. black comedians who were kind of a counter-programming mm -hmm. to Martin Lawrence and, and Eddie Murphy and and all of those comedians. Yeah. I think Sinbad, as you said, always struck you as a good guy. So even though he wasn't that funny, you kind of liked him. You liked him. So that's what it was. So like, 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 and 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 I, I enjoyed him on a different world. Mm -hmm. Like he was good on a different world. Um but his whole shtick was he was clean. And then, you, you know, you talk about his physicality. But a huge part of his act was he, he his big ass would be doing all them, her, you know, them herky-jerky movements and kind of doing his little thing. And that was his deal. Mm. As far as his film is concerned, I agree with every single solitary thing that you said. I think because it was HBO... I also agree with your assessment that a lot of a lot of people may have signed on to this because of Sinbad. This cast is so stacked that it is damn near bulletproof. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the the Bert the part with Bert the sequence with Bert Rim it actually goes from sequence to sequence. Yeah. Cause like a lot of westerns, yeah. But I'm saying which with each sequence, the best compliment that you can give Sinbad, which is why I disagree with what you said about the Mario Van Peebles, and you corrected yourself immediately. Sinbad gets out the way. Mm. Sinbad does not distract. So he goes from that moment with Hal Williams, who is a, a veteran of television and film at this point. The the scenes with the two with 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 his two foster parents are funny. From there he goes to like you know as you said Burt Reynolds. Mm -hmm. He has a scene with the Walter Goggins gang. He has a legitimately funny exchange with the bank teller where there's this back and yeah, forth yeah. where where I said Sinbad is actually being funny right here. Yeah. Yeah, and he's being the funny one. And he's being the funny yeah, one. Yeah, I, I, that's true. From that there, true. they hand the baton off to, uh, as you said, Ernie Hudson 
And I mean, to Burt Reynolds, yes. which we talked about. And that Burt Reynolds sequence is hilarious. But again, this is a year before Boogie Nights. So they really got Burt Reynolds at this moment. Whereas you said, I, I feel like Burt Reynolds was transitioning mm -hmm. into almost a character act. Yep. And he it, like he is generous. He is he is a physical comedian. Burt Reynolds, I think people forget, and, and I have to say, I'm people. People forget Burt Reynolds is funny. Yes. Burt Reynolds has always been funny. My beloved Cannibal Run movies and that period of Burt and and even Burt Reynolds in the Smokey and the Bandit movies. I think the Cannonball movies, we were drawn to Dom DeLuise. Mm -hmm. Smoking the Bandit movies were drawn to Jackie Gleason. They're the big funny. Yeah. But Burt Riddles is funny in all of those. Yeah. Like, he's a funny guy. And you see that, those instincts shine in here. As you mentioned, Ernie Hudson has this gravitas. I know. You know he's bald he's he's you know he's an older not an older man but he's old enough that he has this this gravity to him that is fantastic i am sure i have liked don lewis in episodes of different world more than i liked her in the 10 minutes she's in this movie yeah yeah she she basically but i can't check. think of them i like don lewis so much in this film, I loved her character as this kind of tomboyish. You wanted more from her. I wanted more from. I wanted more from everyone. That's true. By the time it transitions to Vanessa Bell Calloway, another one who I think has never gotten the opportunity to have the comedic roles that I thought she was well suited suited for, and then at least for us, for the Michelle mission, like then you just, you know, in, in spades talk, like your hand is spade, like your spades tight. Mm -hmm. You just keep playing spades, keep playing spades, keep playing spades, and then you drop the big joker in the past, in the last 15 minutes with Gregory Hines. I know, I know. It's like, my, like by the time it goes off, and the four of them, including, and, and I just forgot the actor's name. A. Martinez. A. Martinez, who I enjoyed a great deal. Mm -hmm. By the time the film goes off, Sinbad, A. Martinez, Gregory Hines, and um, Vanessa, Bell, Vanessa Bell Calloway ride off into new adventures. I said, well, I wanted the sequel to this. You would. Like, I very much would watch this, much like you. I, I agree that they can't figure out what they want to do with Sinbad. If they mm -hmm. want, you know, they want to lean into the physical comedy and the sort of the the bumbling big guy, or they want to just make him, you know, almost play it straight. Right. But I thought this was a entertaining film for the most part, and there are sections of this film that were very entertaining. And I think Sinbad's agent did a phenomenal job getting him involved in this project. So that, yeah, I was I was pleasantly surprised. With I was how pleasantly much I surprised this film. Uh, at this film. Um, there's a moment at the end of the movie with with Gregory Hines. Mm-hmm. And, and, it, and it's almost the very end of the mo movie. But Gregory Hines is, the camera cuts to him like in a doorway and he does like a little gun flip. I rewound that moment about four times. Mm -hmm. Because if you ever wanted an illustration of just who Gregory Hines is, it was in that one moment. He's standing there, first of all, He's, his character is the Undertaker. Yes. So he's an all yes. black, with the black hat, mm -hmm. long coat, yeah, pants, you know, bolero tie. He's standing there, and Gregory Hines, like like most dancers, 
Mm-hmm. They can't just stand. Right, right. They can't, just can't just be in a picture. No. Mm-hmm. Like, what, whatever stance they take, it still looks like they're moving. Yeah. So he's standing there, and he's and he he's just cocked in such a way that it looks like he's ready to tear shit up. Mm-hmm. And he does the little perfect twirl with his gun mm-hmm. into the holster, never takes his eye off the camera. Yeah. Oh yeah. At all. It's subtle. It's not it's not a big flourish. It's just enough to let you know that I'm cool with this. Yeah. And 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 he's and he's got, you know, his mustache is all all sheened up and everything. I was like, Ah, Gregory, what are you doing? What are you doing to me? I'm I'm confused right now. Yeah, I'm confused, yeah. Gregory. What are you doing? Well, I was like, oh my god, like that wasn't supposed to happen. When Vanessa Bell Calloway shows up in this movie and she smiles and her dimple pops, I, 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 I was supposed to feel that way. Gregory Hines had me feel. I was confused in this movie. It's look. It is. It is. I, I will say one of the one of the smart decisions that the film makes is that it uses Gregory Hines sparingly. The, he, he begins the movie and then he's at the end, and then he comes back at the he, end because he bookends the movie. Because you, you know it's it it like in my mind the two great the two great physical presences in this film are Gregory Hines and Ernie Hudson, mm. but Ernie Hudson is almost the opposite of Gregory Hines. Where yes. It's this great stillness. Mm-hmm. Even when he's talking. Even, so that you can have all of this kinetic stuff, you know, Don Lewis and Sinbad and, and A. Martinez kind of bouncing around his stillness. But Gregory Hines, like you said, even when he's not moving, has this dancer's kineticism to him so that there were moments... When Gregory Hines and Sinbad were together, and you know, to go back to what we're, you know, just Sinbad is just physically this big man, mm-hmm. where where he seemed almost bumbly yeah. next to Gregory Hines. Yeah, and I have to give credit to the director, um, Paris Barkley. Paris Barkley, who, who you know is a pretty well renowned television director. Yeah. And and I have to say I thought the direction in this film was was nothing spectacular. Me neither. But much like Sinbad, I think that ends up being a compliment. Mm. Because it didn't get in the way. Like I think these performances were such that that you know I, I almost got the sense he kind of backed up and let everybody be. Well, I do disagree on that. I do think that it, it, um, the direction lets down the movie. There are some jokes and physical bits that happen in this movie that I don't think the direction sells mm. properly. Now, you don't think that's Sinbad? No, I think that's the direction. Okay. No, I, uh, there's, honestly, uh, there are moments where I think the direction lets, lets it down. Mm-hmm. I, think the, um, I think the direction is a little pedestrian in this one. Like there are moments where there are moments where there is something physically happening, mm-hmm. but we're on tight shots of people's faces. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is a detriment to the movie. It actually made me look up Paris Barkley's resume mm-hmm. and I was actually surprised to see how accomplished right, he right. is. He's and then, and he's, and the, but he's a television guy. He's a television, but he's worked on some some very oh, prominent yeah, yeah, yeah. prominent work, um, and actually been awarded, you know, and nominated and awarded for some. So, I guess I said that to say this actually felt like a television. It film, did, but it, but even but even then, it didn't feel like good television. Like it okay. it, it felt very like you know he he, he cast a check. Okay. Um, to be to just to be honest, not knocking the man because yeah. honestly he's, he obviously has his bona fides, but I don't think this is a career highlight. Right, right. For it's him, not what he puts in his Oscar reel. It's not yeah. on his reel. Yeah, yeah. Unless he wants to show that one scene of Gregory Hines. Well, well, I have to tell you, Lynn. I, I, I really did when I finished watching. I was like, oh boy, I guess we're just gonna have to fight tonight because. 
I kind of like this. I know. We're not supposed, this is not where we're supposed to be landing. <laughs> right. In the month of May. Right. We're, we're, right. we're not. Right. We're not. Let the record show. I picked two dogs. You did. <laughs> I picked two dogs. You have. You yeah. have. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, this is actually my one. No, I picked, oh, I picked two dogs. No, this isn't a dog at all. No, I no, I'd say, I guess I have to pick one dog. Yeah. I have one dog. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Yeah, well, so 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 I'm as sorry. we as we as we come to the portion of the show where apparently there's going to be a bit of a plot twist, I think. Mm. Mm-hmm. Lynn. Yes. Would you recommend the Cherokee Kid? I gotta say, I would recommend the Cherokee Kid. I would. I would. Is it nice? And and. While there are, I think there may be one or two swear words in this movie, it's a family movie. Look. I, you can watch you, it with the family. You can absolutely, I think and, and, 11 or 12. Yeah, enjoy 11, it. 12 year old, yeah. And, and enjoy yeah. the movie. Yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> I would also recommend The Cherokee Kid. It's like, this, is, this is not where we're supposed yeah. to be. Yeah. This is not where we're supposed to be at, at the end of the show, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. I, um, <laughs> But before I tell you where we're, where else we're not supposed to be, <laughs> I invite you to um, let us know what you thought of the Cherokee, the Cherokee Kid, Kid or our review of the Cherokee Kid. Yeah. Send us an email, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. You can email the Michaud Mission at michaudmission at gmail.com. You can, all, you can also Pharaoh Blackwell's in the chat. I can't believe y'all recommend this. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Pharaoh. We have to be true to ourselves. We gotta be real. We gotta be real. <laughs> gotta, gotta be, be real. real, man. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, but Pharaoh, if you feel differently, write us an email. <laughs> Tell us what you thought of the Cherokee Kid. There's a part where Burt Reynolds is talking about killing a bear with his bare hands. And it's just Burt Reynolds riffing and joking. I said... This this is this is this is worth it right here. Like this is the whole movie. Yeah, oh, this yeah. Is the whole movie. Yeah. Um, or Pharaoh, you can leave us a voicemail. <laughs> Why don't you do that? Why don't you get pick well, up your phone? Well, you gonna you gonna ride this voicemail? <laughs> this 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 is your thing right here. <laughs> <coughs> Pharaoh. Why don't you pick up your phone? <laughs> dial 215-867-9666. Tell us what you thought of the Cherokee Kid. <laughs> Tell us what you thought of our review of the uh, of the film. If any of you want to leave us a voicemail, feel free. The number is 215-867-9666. You can also like and follow the Show Mission on the social media of your choice, whether it be Instagram or Twitter or in our Facebook group, at Show Mission. Subscribe to the Show Mission on YouTube, where you can hit that bell to make sure that you are notified whenever we go live or we post any of our short videos, or subscribe to The Michelle Mission wherever you find the podcast, on Apple, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, wherever you find podcasts, The Michelle Mission is there, I promise you. Mm -hmm. The Michelle Mission is also a proud member of The Podglomerate, thepodglomerate.com. They make podcasts work, like this one which streams live every Tuesday from the Video Content Factory, Philadelphia's premier video podcast palace. Go to videocontentfactory.com and book your time with their cool-ass staff, except Dylan, because he's ours. He actually produces another show on Wednesday. They don't know, but I'm about to, like, embargo him from their show. Well, hopefully they don't watch this and you just announced it to them. No, they don't watch. They don't All watch right. this. Well, good for them then, because they should be watching. Exactly. There you go. All right. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> talk about <laughs> plot twists. <laughs> There's a bunch of you out there that just got our newsletter. They said that next week we are going to be here with comedian Daryl Charles mm-hmm. reviewing Marked for Death. Yeah, yeah. That's what the newsletter said. That's what the newsletter said. Mm-hmm. However, funny thing happened on the way to the to the studio this yeah, evening. Yeah, yeah. Vincent and I got notified of oh, one of those great many things that happened to aspiring film critics. 
got notified of a movie screening. We did. And it is the one movie screening this summer that we have been waiting for. It is. And it takes place next Tuesday. It does. So, which means that we won't be here. We won't. We won't be here. I'm sorry. We are. <laughs> We're not really sorry. We won't be no, here. We are. We are. Vincent is. All I'm right. gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I won't lie to you. I am. I'm sorry. not sorry because sure Vincent and I mm -hmm. will be at a movie screening mm -hmm. of Spider Man. What is it? It's not into. Into the Spider Verse. Is it into the Spider Verse? Is... Into the Spider Verse. I just call it Miles Morales. Miles Morales. We're going to see Miles Morales. The movie. The movie. Book two. Book two. <laughs> That's what we're, we're going to be, yeah. be watching. So this represents our closing mm -hmm. of Mother May I. Um, we ended on a sweet note. We did end on a sweet it's note. It's kind of like bringing the, the orange slices at the end of a <laughs> traditional Chinese meal. Um, so sweetness. So we won't be here next week. Um, we'll, you know, do something. Something will be on a feed. Yes, yes. <laughs> a classic episode. Perhaps a classic. Hey, want to see them leave us a voicemail? <laughs> and tell us what classic episode of the Michelle Mission should we run next week? Give us a call. Give us a 215 Eight six seven nine six six six. Because if you don't call, we'll rerun this one. <laughs> <laughs> In the words of Bernie Mac, I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mr. Webb, <laughs> right. you're dropping f bombs. It's probably, <laughs> it's time, probably to go. time for you to wrap this up. <laughs> Until the week after next, he's Vincent. I'm Len, and in parting, we say, "We'll see you in the top."